So yeah, in this presentation, we will see how does, what does mean agent and new economy, and we will see how this agent network goes together. So these days, there's a lot of noise about AI and blockchain, how does thing goes together. Uh, and this, this is an agent that we will see how, how actually like technical concepts actually work together and how it actually makes sense. So first of so we, this is the agenda we will have. So first of all, most of you probably don't know what's actually an agent and what's an agent network. So first we'll start with what is an agent network, some definition on some examples. Then we'll continue with the foundation of an agent network. Why do we actually need an agent network? And then we'll go like, what's why blockchain and all that stuff. And then we'll go to the core concepts of an agent network. Oh, and of course, like thank you all for being here. Pretty nice to be on Korea now. So yeah. Let's get started. So basic thing, what's actually an agent? So most of you probably have interacted with some agent, uh, ChatGPT, for example, that's an agent using OpenAI GPT-4 most of the times. Uh, in a simple way to actually define what is an agent, it could be something like this. They can be like digital assistants. They can actually perform tasks, they can learn from data, and they can like be autonomous. Um, Basically, they, they are doing these things. Automated tasks, they can learn from data, and they can make decisions. Some more examples can be ChatGPT, Tesla, Alexa, or Siri. So let's see some practical examples. So this example, CryptoCopilot, this is one agent that we have implemented for the in itself. So CryptoCopilot, for example, can do anything you want about crypto. Basically, can actually make swaps, can actually send uh, some token to another place, buy crypto, make orders, or just like anything you want on crypto right now. So as you can see, the user have produced some input called like, hey, DeFi expert, swap me one dollar of soul for slurf. So the agent itself will actually read this and it, it will actually process some logic like, okay, how do I can achieve this objective? How can I create the perfect like uh, output of that? So the agent will, will think like, okay, First, I will have to calculate the sold price in USD. And you can see there is a token price call. And then he will actually calculate how much the sold is this $1 USD. So he will create some math. And, and of course, like agents can execute code. That's why actually is creating some calls in the different functions. And then with all these variables, he can actually create some swap transaction because he now, he now knows how much sold is one dollar, so he can, he can create the swap transaction, and this is just an example of a swap itself that actually you can do with like some input. And as you can see, the the, age, the the user can actually confirm, and yeah, this is you can see from this token to another token, and you can actually modify the sleep page, and I think. So this is one example, one crypto friendly example. Let's go to some more like AI only. So. Not sure if you have known, but in AI community and like uh, software engineers mainly, we have heard of something called Davin. Davin is one that was the first AI software engineer that, that was trending like the last weeks. And basically, Davin uh, can actually execute like complex code. Not that much complex. So right now, it's 13% of all the issues that are able right now to, ac to actually complete. But he can actually complete some task uh, designed for like freelancers. So he can actually do uh, some jobs for freelancers right now. And uh, we can see that eventually it's getting better and better, like most of the times. So um, it's pretty interesting uh, to see kind of like these agents actually working together. So yeah, this was a coding and AI style. So now let's go with a foundation and a financial network. Let's see why do we actually need an Asian network and what's the use case of that. So right now, agents are kind of like trapped in a box. They are kind of like isolated. For example, when you interact with ChatGPT, it has no way to actually communicate with another agent. It's just like an individual isolated agent. Uh, so that's actually some limitation for complexity uh, in basically in agents. So why we are not connecting them? Just like one can be specialized in something and the other can be specialized in other things. So we can actually can, they can actually like interact with each other. So that's what we actually propose. You can see in this example, uh, there is a user actually interacting with um, uh, ChatGPT in this example, OpenAI, and it is an isolated agent uh, saying like, okay, I want to trade my soul for a Maldats NFT. And the agent will be like, okay, sorry, I don't have the capabilities for that. I mean, like, I don't have the context to actually like do that. But if we actually have a multi-agent system, for example, like this, one can specialize in DeFi, the other in NFTs, and the other in lending, then 
he can, they can achieve it because this DeFi, DeFi agent can connect with an NFT agent they can, because they can actually specialize in some specific functions and more. So thanks to that, they can actually be, get connected and yet com like, accomplish the objective of the user. So this is uh, an easy example to understand, just like a user wanting to buy an NFT and he don't have the resources, so he will connect with another that actually have the resources to actually do that. So this is a multi-agent system, basically. Let's see some practical, practical example from multi-agent system. So this is Autodev. This was released two weeks ago from Microsoft. This was a paper uh, where they actually describe how they can actually create an AI-driven development. For software engineers, this is basically pretty much the future itself. Just like uh, having multiple agents delegating different tasks for the process of the development of a project. Uh, they actually can, they demonstrated that they actually leveraging multi-agent systems, they can actually complete more complex tasks. And as you can see, the user will have some rules and actions and the objective. In this case, the user will actually sell, tell like, okay, I want to complete this thing. I want to develop these specific uh, things with like these features. So there will be like an entire process. Like there will be like a conversation manager. There will be like an agent orchestrating the other agents and multi-agent systems. And yeah, basically they can actually complete a complex task. So yeah, this was released from Microsoft like two weeks ago. So actually demonstrating that actually multi-agent systems uh, can actually complete more complex tasks. So going more for far beyond, why do we why we don't create an entire network of agent systems, a uh, network where kind of like they can specialize in something? So basically, multiple organizations where they can actually specialize in something. For example, uh, it can be like um, security, DeFi, financial research, prediction markets, NFTs, academic research. So your, your entire organization can specialize in something. So you can actually like uh, interact with between the different organizations. So we are essentially creating, well, at, at Dane, we are actually creating a network of, a, of experts uh, because organizations can actually specialize in some specific topics, such as like auditing smart contracts, um, research in like data from crypto or finance, whatever, and prediction markets to actually have the, the more like real real time data as possible. And yeah, between others. But of course, this is like this is limitless. This is like infinity. You can actually have as much um, category experts as you want. This depends on the demand and the offer, of course. If there is demand, there is the offer, there is offers usually. So, quite quite important. Why do we actually use blockchain here? So first of all, uh, we can have an immutable public ledger. This means that. Organizations and agents, they can have their own identity and reputation. So they can construct their own reputation over time. And this means that in using blockchain, uh, basically, you have your entire like records um, for eternity at, at some point. So that's why, that's one of the main um, pros, actually, having a blockchain itself. Uh, the second one, um, or oh, there was some error there here, but uh, it's a robust payment infrastructure. This means that it's extremely, um, you, you can have payments, micro payments, like pretty easily using blockchain and more with like highly scalable blockchains such as like uh, Solana, Layer 2s, uh, or new generation like Sui or Aptos. Uh, you can have like very cheap payment infrastructure and you can actually have subscribes and like different payment methods. And the last one is that it's a centralized and cens censorship resistant. Uh, this means that there is no censorship in the network itself. Of course, the community can actually choose what they think it's wrong or what it is, it's, it's okay. But it's decentralized at some point. So of course, uh, anyone can actually join and start kind of like uh, getting like uh, services there. So let's see some, okay, let's, yeah. So now let's see, so in our case, Dane, we actually selected Solana Virtual Machine. So Solana Virtual Machine is based on Solana, of course. Um, and this has, this, these are this, the pros of the Solana Virtual Machine. First of all, Solana have 400 milliseconds on confirmation times. This means that for each second, more, more than two transactions, they will, be, they will be confirmed. So first of all, it's fast confirmation times. We actually need that for actually having agents. Second, when you use Solana Virtual Machine, you have very low transaction fees. So it's perfect for having an expensive uh, data uh, interaction, basically. And then we have the high data throughput. This means, so data throughput is the amount of uh, data that the blockchain can actually digest per second. So that's something extremely useful when you actually use data for like communicating as like fast interactions. So in comparison, you can see like with multiple blockchains here, 
Uh, Ethereum, for example, is layer one, not designed for scaling right now. Uh, well, layer two, of course, they are designed to scale. But for example, in like what we are using uh, is Fire Dancer optimization of Solana. Uh, we can have like uh, hundreds of times more actually data throughput for that. So it means that our network can digest, can digest a lot more data right now. So yeah, and this was from the frictionless re capital report. But as I said, I said um, because we are from some virtual machine, um, you can actually do it with any any layer too if you actually have your entire like speed and like cost uh, kind of like aligned. So yeah, so now let's go with the, one of the core features of like Asian network. So probably you know that agents, uh, well, of course, of course, like organizations, they have some identity. If I have Microsoft, Microsoft, you know that they are good at software and actually they have like uh, multiple kind of like uh, they have created multiple products and like different things. So in our case, identity, it will be for like identifying what organizations are about. So this organization, for example, it's called Super Researchers, and there is some, descri some description for that. So, and this organization contains multiple agents. So this means that this organization can own like multiple uh, multi-agent systems. And you can see like there is total agents number. So yeah, on blockchain, you have, they have their own identity, basically. And then going deep into it, kind of like agents. So each agent, most of them will be conversation managers. Uh, these agents will have their own identity and reputation also. So they can have some kind of like uh, proof there on chain. So let's see some example about how does agent to agent communication actually works. So this is pretty basic. Just like, let's suppose a user want to like, want to know the top 100 coins by active users. And this DeFi agent doesn't have the resources to actually do that. So what he will do exactly? So this agent will create a session on chain, it will connect to the blockchain itself, and will create a session to actually start the communications. And then there will be a research agent on the other side telling like, okay, I know how to answer this. I can actually get monetized. If you pay me this quantity or just any subscription or whatever, um, they will actually provide the information. So yeah, from the DeFi agent to the research agent and the research agent will provide you the information for that. So there is also an exchange of value here. So yeah, at, final, at the end, the DeFi agent can actually complete this task. So he can provide to the user uh, these top 100 coins sorted by active users. So this is an, this is an example. It's like when, you don't, when, you, when your agent doesn't have the resources, you can actually use a network to actually like provide any information possible if there is like offer there. And at the end, the, the DeFi agent, so of course there is a reputation. So this means that if your agent is not providing good answers or is not doing a proper job, uh, there will be some reputation. You will have bad reputation. This agent will review the other agent saying like, okay, uh, your answer was correct or not correct. So there is an entire like reputation system for each session. And of course, so, well, it's fine, yeah. Because in Solana, when you create a session, you are creating some state, but when you final finalize, you close the session. So basically you recover the payment that you made for a state. But yeah, this is more technical uh, stuff from Solana. So yeah, the, st the status will be finalized. So talking about the uh, reputation, so of course, having a reputation system with an agent network is extremely important because when you want to get some information, you will always kind of like go to the more like legit actually, uh, legit organization. So having a trusted service provider is extremely important. Yes. Also, uh, when you have an, an organization and your agent network, if you are like very good performer and you contribute a lot to the community and more, you will be eligible to Epoch Rewards. So these Epoch Rewards will come from uh, fees from the protocol and also from like uh, some supply part of the token release. And at the end, uh, another concept is transparent and immutable. So this means that uh, you can actually see if there is like some agent that have a reput bad reputation or some, they, offer, they offered like bad services. So it's very important to have transparency and immutability for uh, reputation here. So let's go, so you probably you know like traditional oracles. Traditional oracles, they just provide prices, randomness, and more things, but pretty basic in complexity. But if you actually, if you actually have an agent network, uh, you can actually achieve more complexity and almost like any kind of like objective, objective, objective information. So 
having an agent network, you can actually push the boundaries of what is possible with oracles. We, co we call it the smart oracles. So thanks to that, well, first I will show this example. So to understand it more, like what's actually a smart oracle? So let's suppose the user actually asks, like, who won the match Real Madrid versus Barcelona to a prediction markets agent? And he will be like, OK, I want to make sure this information is 100% correct. So what he will do? He will actually like create a, a consensus, and multiple agents can join to answer. So here, for example, there will be like multiple agents with multiple weights. So each weight will depend on identity and reputation. So um, the more reputation you have, the better reputation, the more weight you will actually have. And they offer some kind of like payment here. So of course, like when answering, they will be like, okay, the winner was Barcelona. Barcelona, Barcelona, and Real Madrid. And this one, Barcelona. So the majority here is achieved by like the number of agents and also like the weight that they have. So in this case, you can see that the answer, of course, will be like, okay, Barcelona. Uh, because um, they have agreed, they, there is a majority that they actually, is, it was Barcelona. And, of, and this formula basically is like the honest agents, um, like the majority is achieved by the honest agents, basically. So yeah, this is an example of a um, smart oracle consensus. And of course, thanks to that, you can actually achieve like unlimited data potential. So this means you can actually get any kind of data you want. So for example, this was prediction markets, like who was the winner of that football match? But you can achieve like prices, uh, security, you can actually check if your smart contract is secure, like with multiple agents uh, uh, you, and research or like you remove like everything kind of like from BS also. So it's a robust and reliable data because you can actually have multiple sources uh, from multiple different agents and like different trainings and like kind of like different kind of like brains for saying something like that. So yeah, also it's, it's non bias I mean like because you can actually select a diverse like number of agents and diverse organizations. So don't depend on a single point of failure. And then the complexity. Thanks to like smart agents, thanks to the agents network, uh, you can actually achieve very high complexity with the questions. Uh, I mean, like extremely high. You can actually like even get your uh, smart contract audit with like multiple like multi-agent systems. So, okay. And how do how do how do these agents actually get the information? They actually use something called retrieval augmented generation uh, rack, basically. Uh, this is pretty famous in AI right now, and basically it's something like this: uh, the user actually asks the agent, and the agent can actually search the web. They can actually search the web or search like the multiple APIs. So in this case, for like top 100 coins, he will search on Birtai and Coin Market Cap. So it's basically retrieving external information. So agents can actually have like unlimited potential with like connecting with data providers and data brokers, basically. So this is how they actually managed to actually complete uh, this, uh, who was the winner of that football match. So now let's go to something important, to the security itself. So to actually manage all the security, it will depend on two things, reputation and staking. Reputation is extremely important because reputation, um, your agent, like whatever you do on chain, it will be recorded for eternity. So if you actually manage uh, extremely bad reputation, um, you will get kind of like higher, like lower weight, essentially. So, and the other thing is staking. Actually, users will be able to secure the network. They, if they think that some organization have good reputation and they think like, okay, they are very good performance, probably they will, they will have higher rewards. So they can actually like stake to them. Now we'll see how it actually they manage it. So users can like deposit their stake. Um, so, and this is Solana Virtual Machine. So it's Solana style. Uh, programming language. So the user can actually stake to the organization, to the staking account. So basically, he will stake to the staking account at the end. So yeah. Uh, the, the steps is that user first stake, then uh, it will be sent to the delegation account. And after the epoch pass, it will be moved to a staking account. So of course, this is how actually delegations actually work on staking. So yeah, and if you're curious about Solana, just like, in this case, Solana works at, they use derivated uh, program addresses. So each organization will have some staking account. And also, they will have some rewards account. So basically, the organization owns these accounts, but they also. So it's, 
It's called PDA in Solana. It's more complex technical st stuff. So yeah, essentially that. Because the user can actually stick to the organization that they want. And at the end, uh, depending on the performance and the commission of the organization, they can actually get some rewards. Because each epoch, you know, an epoch usually lasts, uh, in this case, two, two days. So after two days, we will evaluate all the reputation and all the performance from all the agents and the staking also. And we'll actually like provide uh, the rewards to them. So the user will actually receive rewards and the realization also will receive the rewards. So there is an entire like sustainable ecosystem here. And of course the rewards come also from like fees, fee usage from the protocol. And yeah, that was all about AI and uh, blockchain. And if you have any question, feel free to ask. Thank you so much, Carlos. And first question right here. Uh, you mentioned RAG earlier on. Um, would that be using like raw transaction data as well? Or? Sorry? Would that be using raw transaction data as well? Like, you mean like transaction, like public key? No, no, as in um, actual like blockchain transactions. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, like, so right now, so now you can simulate the transactions and then understand each instruction inside the transaction. So this means that, for example, uh, in our case, we have created some security style. So basically, for each transaction, we can actually simulate it. And for each instruction, we can actually see if there is some kind of like a uh, rack. For example, if they want to extract some kind of like something that doesn't make sense in the oh, intersection. Okay. So this means that um, mm -hmm. they can simulate and they can verify each instruction. But if we go more far beyond, you can actually know all the smart contracts that they interact with because you can actually like um, kind of like reverse engineering the bytecode from the smart contracts. Yeah. So you can actually check that there is any sus anything suspicious or not. But yeah, that's more far beyond. Okay. okay. Yeah, I was, I was going to mention it. Whoops. <laughs>